this is the unit circle, and as you can see, there's a lot going on. So for today's crazy calculations, we're going to be breaking down the unit circle. So let's get started. The unit circle is just a circle on the coordinate plane. It has a center at 0, 0, and a radius of 1. So this is the center, and this point is 1, 0, because this right here is a radius. And this point here is 0, 1, and this point here is negative 1, 0, and this point here is 0, negative 1, because these here are all radii as well. Now let's zoom into the first quadrant of our unit circle. The unit circle has three different types of angles, and the first angle looks like this. It's a 30 degree angle, or pi over 6, because 30 is 1 sixth of 180. And now what we need to do is find this point right here. To do this, we'll draw a right triangle. And as you can see, our hypotenuse of our right triangle is 1, because this is also a radius of the circle. And now we just have to solve this triangle like a normal 30, 60, 90 right triangle. The hypotenuse is 1, and the shorter leg of a 30, 60, 90 right triangle is always half of the hypotenuse. So this is 1 half, and the longer leg is always the shorter leg times root 3, so this is root 3 over 2. So if we take a look back at our unit circle, to get to this point right here, we need to go over root 3 over 2 and up 1 half, which means this point here is root 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. And now let's look at our second type of line. It looks like this, and it's a 45 degree angle, or pi over 4, because 45 is 1 fourth, of 180 degrees. And now again, we need to find the point where this angle intersects with the circle. So we're going to draw a right triangle again. And again, the hypotenuse is a radius, so this is 1. So if we look at the triangle right here, it's just a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. And if you remember, the two legs in this right triangle should be the same, and they should be the hypotenuse divided by root 2. So we'll do 1 divided by root 2, and then we'll rationalize the denominator to get root 2 over 2. So that means this leg is root 2 over 2, and so is this leg. So if we look back at our unit circle, to get to this point right here, we need to go over root 2 over 2 and up root 2 over 2, which means this point is root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2. And now let's look at our last type of angle. Our last angle looks like this, and it's a 60 degree angle, or pi over 3, because 60 is 1 third of 180 degrees. Again, we need to find this point right here, and we'll just draw another right triangle. This is the hypotenuse right here, and it's also a radius, which means it's also 1. So again, we just need to solve for this triangle right here, and we just have another 30, 60, 90 right triangle. This time, the shorter leg is right here, and the hypotenuse is still 1. So this leg right here is 1 half, and this leg right here is 1 half times root 3, so we get root 3 over 2. So if we look back at our unit circle, to get to this point right here, we need to go over 1 half and up root 3 over 2, so this point is 1 half comma root 3 over 2. And now if we put everything together, we have our three angles, and we know them in degrees and radians, and we know the points where they intersect with the unit circle. And now I'm just going to add some basic things. This right here is zero degrees, because it hasn't gone anywhere, and zero radians. And this right here is a 90 degree angle, or pi over 2, because it's half of 180 degrees. And now we've filled out a quarter of our unit circle. Well, actually, it only looks like a quarter, but in reality, we've done the bulk of the work. Basically, everything else in the unit circle has the same reference angles as these three angles right here, which means they share many of the same characteristics. So I'm going to copy down these angles and degrees and radians and the points where they intersect with the circle, so I can use this to fill out the rest of the unit circle. Also, everything on this unit circle will be color-coded by reference angle, so hopefully it will be easier for you to see the pattern that this circle follows. So if we zoom out, we can see that we have our whole first quadrant filled, and we also have some lines in the third quadrant, so let's go and fill those out. First of all, before we can use these reference angles, we have to know the angle of this line right here. And this is 180 degrees, or pi. And like I said, everything in this unit circle will be color-coded by reference angle. So this red angle right here has a reference angle of 30 degrees. That means this angle in standard position has to be 180 degrees plus 30 degrees, which means it's 210 degrees. And the same thing with radians. So this right here is pi over 6 radians, so in standard position it's pi plus pi over 6, which gives us 7 pi over 6. And this point right here is the exact same as the point in the first quadrant, but we're in the third quadrant this time, so it has to have a negative x value and a negative y value. So it's the same thing, but with a negative in front of the x and y value. And the reason why it's the same point is because if we were to draw another triangle right here, we would still have a hypotenuse of 1 because this is also a radius, and we still have our 30 degree angle, which means we would still get the same legs. And now we can just follow the same steps that we did for this angle for the rest of the angles in this quadrant. To find the angles in degrees, we'll just do 180 degrees plus the reference angle to get 225 and 240, and in radians we'll do pi plus the reference angle 
to give us 5 pi over 4 and 4 pi over 3. And again, these points are the same as the points in the first quadrant, except they have negative x values and negative y values. And now to finish off this quadrant, I'm just going to label this line right here. This is pi plus pi over 2, which gives us 3 pi over 2, or 180 degrees plus the 90 degree angle right here, which gives us 270 degrees. Now, if we look at our unit circle, we are halfway through. Now let's take a look at our second quadrant. Our lines from earlier don't extend to this quadrant, so we'll draw three more lines for these three new angles. First, we have the red line, which has a 30 degree reference angle, which means it's 180 degrees minus 30 degrees, which means it's 150 degrees in standard position. And now we can do the same thing for these other two angles. We can do 180 degrees minus the reference angle to get 135 and 120 degrees. And for radians, we know this is pi, and this here is pi over 6, so we'll do pi minus pi over 6 to get 5 pi over 6 for this red line in standard position. And we'll do the same thing for the other two angles. We'll do pi minus the reference angle to give us 3 pi over 4 and 2 pi over 3. And now for the points where they intersect with the circle, they are the same as in the first quadrant, except this time we have a negative x value, because the second quadrant always has negative x values. So we'll just copy down the same points, but with negatives in front of the x values. And now we're three quarters of the way through. Now let's take a look at the fourth quadrant. Before we use our reference angles, we have to know what this here is, and this is 360 degrees, because it's a full circle. And in radians, that's 2 pi, because 2 pi makes a full circle in radians. And now we know this right here is a 30 degree reference angle, which means this in standard position has to be 360 minus 30, which is 330 degrees. And we'll do the same thing for these two angles. 360 degrees minus their reference angles gives them these angles. And we'll do the same thing for radians. 2 pi minus pi over 6 right here gives us 11 pi over 6 for this angle in standard position. And 2 pi minus these reference angles gives us 7 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 3. And now for the points, they're the same as the points in the first quadrant, except this time we have a negative y value, because we're in the fourth quadrant. Fourth quadrant has negative y values. So these are our points that we get. And now if we zoom out, we have completed our full unit circle. As you can see, the reference angles play a big role in this unit circle, because really everything follows the same pattern as the first quadrant. And as you can see, anything with the same color angle also has the same denominator in radians. So red is always something over 6 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. And you can see the same works for all the other colors. The yellow ones are always pi over 4s, and the green ones are always pi over 3. And also everything with the same reference angle also has the same point where it intersects with the circle, except some may have negatives. And that's it for the unit circle. Like always, if you have any questions, comments, videos you want to see, or anything else you want to say, feel free to drop a comment down below. And other than that, I will see you next time.